himself. Sean Spicer speaks on behalf of the Republican National Committee. He's the communications director over there. Sean, always good to see you, sir. Thanks for being with me. You bet, Craig. Thanks for having me. And let me uh, let me just read something that you've probably already seen. It's from Mark McKinnon, veteran GOP strategist, worked on campaigns for George W. Bush, among others. He said, quote, there's no clear leadership in the Republican Party right now, no clear direction or message, and no way to enforce discipline. And because there's a vacuum and no shortage of cameras, there are plenty of actors happy to audition. Uh, what say you to your fellow Republican, Mark McKinnon? Well, with all due respect, the times have changed since Mark was in the game, and there's a lot more uh, opportunity for folks to get out there and tell the message. I don't think that's a problem. As you went through, there's an official response. Congresswoman Ileana ross Layton is going to deliver the Spanish response, uh, translated from what Kathy McMorris Rogers will do, and then others are going to get out there. I think the many, the more Republican voices that are out there offering an alternative to the current state of, of things but doesn't and that, our side, our, our policies, the better. Sean, doesn't that dilute the voice, though? I mean, if you, if you have four separate voices, I mean, which voice is the voice of the Republican Party? Would that be Kathy? Representative, uh, well, I think, as you mentioned, uh, Congresswoman McMorris Rogers is delivering the official response, but I, I frankly don't think that we as Republicans believe there's one voice. I think that's why we believe we're a better party. We have a lot of different voices. We're a big party with with several different policy ideas. We have set, we have robust debates and come out with the the best policies for this country and for families and businesses. But I, I don't think you have to have everyone marching in lockstep like a bunch of sheep and say this is the only direction we're going to go. Uh, you know, as far as if you look at the other side of the okay. aisle. They're all, they've, they've all kind of coalesced behind the failed policies of the last six years, and look where that's gotten us. Let's talk specifically now about immigration here. Conservative strategist William Crystal uh, says that, that pushing for reform this year is, quote, one of the few things that could actually disrupt what looks like a strong Republican year. He also went on to say that an immigration push would be a, quote, recipe for disaster. Uh, Crystal says you've been dealt a strong hand, Sean. How does that how does it jeopardize that hand to push for reform, which your own autopsy report concluded that your party needs to do? Well, first, I, I think that what, what obviously Bill's referring to there is I think that the failure of Obamacare has been a gift for, for us Republicans as we head into the midterm elections, and I believe he's hoping that we don't take away from that. I think what Speaker Boehner's doing is meeting with the conference this week, laying out a series of principles and trying to get some consensus around there. Uh, but that's what governing's all about, is what we're seeing on our side, is getting people together, putting some ideas together, and seeing what comes out of it. I mean, there are no guarantees where this is headed, but I applaud the Speaker for exhibiting leadership on trying to find a path forward uh, and bringing all of the different voices and, and ideas in our party together and trying to get everyone to coalesce around something uh, for the good of the country. We're hearing that the statement of principles that's going to be unveiled later this week, among other things, is going to uh, call for a path to, to, to legal status, not citizenship, for many of the, the 11 million or so adult immigrants who are in this country illegally. How do you expect that particular part of the plan itself, how do you exp expect that to help you with Latino voters? Well, first, uh, it's way premature for me to comment on, on this, these principles. They have not been officially laid out. Uh, the Speaker has not put them in front of the, co the House conference. Uh, so I'm not going to get ahead of the Speaker on that. But I would say that, that part of what... Uh, this has, this last few years have done is has allowed us to have a conversation with different constituencies as far as what's in the best interest of the country. This is not always about scoring political points. It's trying to figure out what the best policies are for our country so that we secure our borders and we don't end up with a problem like we had back in the 80s where we granted amnesty and then and then find ourselves back Sean, in the same place 30 years. That, so that, they're trying to put a comprehensive plan together that ensures our border is secure and that uh, recognizes the fact that we have a lot of folks that are here in this country illegally. I hear and we have to deal with them in an appropriate way. Not to cut you off, but I hear you using that phrase, secure our borders, um, not so much talking about the path to citizenship. And the reality is, when you talk about securing our borders, I mean, the number of deportations under this administration, higher than any president, regardless of party in, in modern history, uh, you look at the arrests per border patrol agent, the lowest in 20 years, that f secure, secure our borders. In light of those numbers, what does that phrase even mean? 
Well, first of all, it means you've got uh, you still have people coming into the into the country illegally, working illegally, uh, being given refuge illegally. It's trying to make sure that we have a system that, frankly, Craig, everybody I think on both sides sure. of the aisle would agree is broken. And it's trying to make sure that we have a system that allows people to come into this country in a regulated way. That the, we all know the rules. People can come in here. Uh, that that work is permitted when certain criteria are met. But I think that there's no one that would argue that the current immigration system is working well for this country. So, I, and, and when you can get people to come in from the north and from the south, but you would acknowledge uh, and, and you would we don't acknowledge, have those numbers. That's you, a problem. You would acknowledge that the borders are not nearly as porous as they were a decade ago. That's an acknowledgement you would make. I think in some cases they are, in some okay. cases they aren't. If you look along areas of, of Arizona and Texas, officials down there would beg to differ. But I, I agree with you, certain areas have definitely gotten better, yeah. Really quickly here, I want to talk, you brought him up, I want to talk, talk about your uh, fearless leader, House Speaker John Boehner. Tomorrow, Republicans are going to kick off that three-day retreat on the eastern shore of Maryland. Speaker Boehner will, of course, be there leading the, uh, leading the charge. Let's listen to him on uh, our network here on NBC just last week. People think, all right, you're the speaker, you're the leader. Yeah. Uh, they don't realize I've got a lot of other roles that I play. Mm -hmm. You know, some members I have to be the big brother figure. Sure. Some I have to be the father figure. Right. Uh, others I have to be the dean of students or the principal. Right. Yeah. Some of them I have to be the Gestapo. Uh, briefly here, the debt ceiling vote coming up. How, how are the divisions in your party going to play out with regards to that vote specifically in light of what the speaker just said? Well, I think there's a huge concern in our party about the debt. I mean, we've got, we went from $10, $10 trillion when President Obama went in, now we're at $17 trillion. It's, it's more than every other president before him combined, and I think there's a big concern in our party that we just keep passing the buck every time. So it's finding a way to control our debt and our spending in a responsible way, uh, and that's going to be under discussion as well. Sean, I'm not here to defend the president, but, but again, facts are important. The fact of the matter is that if you look at uh, the debt in this country, as, as, a, as a portion of the GDP, it's the lowest that it's been since the Eisenhower administration. That's undeniable. Well, it's also undeniable, Craig, that when the president was campaigning for the presidency in 2008, he called what was then less than 10 trillion unpatriotic and unacceptable. And so now it's 17, you know, just five and a half years later under his watch. So if 10 was unpatriotic and unacceptable under George Bush, I don't see how 17 in any way is acceptable. Uh, and so it may be a percentage of whatever, but the president needs to be held to his own standard, frankly. Uh, and, and that's what I think hopefully we hope to do. Sean Spicer, always good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks, Craig.